Hi guys, Melissa from cloudmom.com. This video is about how to travel alone with five kids. Nothing that any of us would ever look to do, but something that happened to me this past Christmas when I went out to see my aunt and uncle in Colorado and my husband had to work and it was not easy. We had our ups and our downs and let me say we had plenty of downs and I wanted to do this video, however, to walk through what were the things that sort of saved me in those very difficult moments. Some of them I've talked about before because I really like to talk about traveling with kids. I think it's a very challenging thing to do. And of course, in our lives as parents, we hope that we're able to continue to travel and that not everything shuts down. So anyway, here goes. Okay, the number one thing that really helped on this trip to start was that I bought an inexpensive booster seat for Mario, who's three. And I have flown with her without this seat, but this was a lifesaver. It was a little tricky for me to get onto the plane, but once it was there and I strapped her in, that, her in, I was so much better off because with the regular seat belt on the plane, she would slip out of it and just start running up and down the aisles and there was nothing I could do. This way, she was there, she was good, she was, you know, strapped down and uh, that really made it much easier for me. Okay, that was the number one thing. Second, I've talked about this before, sticker books. I think sticker books are a life saver and these are the ones I particularly like. Here's a really great one, I'm gonna hold it up here. It's called Flags of the World. All of my kids adore this. This has literally hundreds of different stickers. It's totally educational and you find the flags of the world and then you stick them, you know, on these really terrific maps. So it's completely educational and it's just got hours and hours and hours worth of activity for your kids. It's not like a book that you read in five minutes, paperback, you're done. Like you can just keep going, keep going. Here's a really good on Star, a good one on Star Wars. Here's a great thing that they, my kids really like. My boys especially, you know, the ultimate sticker collection from John Deere. I'll link to these from my website. All these different like trucks and tractors and all these like cool things. And they can just keep going and going and going. You can get hours out of one of these. And here's what you can do for a really, really little kid. And this is what Marielle liked. I just bought this like 200 sticker collection with princesses and I had paper or whatever and I would just hand her these stickers and she would just go like this, which is good for the early development of small motor and she would just stick and stick and stick. And I really kept her busy doing this for a really, really long time. The other thing I think is great are basic coloring books like this. This is a Kuman, Let's Color. Sorry, I hope I'm not getting too much glare here with the light. And this is really good for a young child. They're like coloring in one area there and it's not so overwhelming as like a whole coloring book. So that's really, really great. Okay, tons of snacks. Now, here's where I've really gone wrong in traveling in the past and I actually did it on this trip once. Often when you're killing a lot of time with kids and they're fussy, the tendency is to overfeed them because you're just trying to sort of placate them and you don't want them to cry and fuss. Now, if you do this with heavy, bready type of foods, they will do something called throw up. <laughs> And every time it happens, we're all so surprised, but you know what? It happens. In fact, it happens quite a lot. So that happened to me on this trip on the way home, actually. Annalise had had breakfast. She was good. It was only like 9.30 in the morning and I was giving her half a sandwich. It's like ridiculous. Like she wasn't ready for lunch and lo and behold, bip. So what I think is really good is tons of light types of snacks. You have to pack food because most airlines now don't provide you with any meals at all. Thank you, airlines. So you have to have sandwiches and food for like your whole day of travel. I came with a, like, I think I had 12 sandwiches, like six ham and cheese, six peanut butter. You need all that. I had bananas, I had biscuits, but then you need light snacks that are not gonna weigh your kid down so much that they're gonna get sick. You know, fruit sticks, things like that, maybe even a little candy, lollipops. My pediatrician recommended those. I would drop all of my rules on sugar. If you can have them sucking on lollipops the whole day, that's okay. I don't think they're gonna get sick from the sugar and it'll keep them sort of happy. So anyway, that's what I do when I travel. Um, okay, 
temper tantrums. I've talked about this one before. It's very, very hard. I have a toddler. She does have tantrums. When you're worrying about what people are going to think about you, it makes it all the worse. And she's a screamer. Love her very much, but she is a little bit of a screamer. So we had a few issues with her sort of screaming out when she wasn't happy and fellow passengers kind of, <sighs> and then you get even more upset. Just let it go. Okay. As long as they think you're doing your best and trying to have your child behave in an appropriate way, they will come around. What they don't want to see is a parent who really doesn't care. So with those tantrums, try not to sort of get involved in what other people think about you or think about you as a mom. It just doesn't matter. Just do your best to sort of control the situation and let that all go. And try to keep your cooling and not get too upset yourself. Okay. Oh, one other thing about that. This applies to just general inconsiderateness too. And the issue we had on this flight was kicking the back of the seat. Marielle was there just like kicking, kicking, kicking. And the guy in front of her is actually a really nice guy. But at some point he's like, you know, because the seat was being kicked and I felt really bad. So I just kept trying to tell her, you can't kick the seat. And she did sort of stop to some extent. And then I said, look, I'm really trying as hard as I can. I'm very sorry. I know it's inconsiderate and I'm really trying as hard as I can. And he was okay. I think when they hear that, other passengers will be okay. Finally, plenty of supplies. You need plenty of diapers. You need Ziploc bags in case of vomit. You need wipes. You need changes of clothes. For a little kid, I would even bring two changes of clothes, very light clothes so that they're portable. And here's the thing I think you still need for any kid that's up to like 15 years old, and I'm not kidding, the hospital burp club. And here's why. We had one incident where Mary Ellie, who's totally potty trained, started to go to the bathroom in her pants. And guess what I did? I was like, you're not going to the bathroom in the car. And she's like, mommy, mommy. I literally like took this thing and slid it into her underwear like a cloth diaper like this. She pooped in this. <laughs> I went to a bathroom at a rest stop. We cleaned her up. I threw this out and we were good. Can you imagine when Annalise threw up? I wet this with water and I cleaned her entire coat and it came off much better than paper towels. This is invaluable. I would bring two on every trip. It's the best baby item ever made. So anyway, those are my tips to traveling alone with five kids. I'm sorry that it was a bit gruesome. Let me know what you guys do. What are your strategies? What have your experiences been like? I would love to hear about them. Please weigh in on my site at cloudmom.com. Thank you so, so much for watching my videos and I will see you next time. Thank you.